Hey now. Hey now. And welcome back to the show where two childhood friends discuss their favourite childhood movies. I'm Emily Sandford. And I'm Barney Lee. And whether it's iconic lines, musical moments, or just questionable outfit choices, the films we'll be talking about on our show are unique in their own way. And this week, we'll be discussing Scooby Dooby Doo! Zoinks! <laughs> Warning this episode contains nostalgia and big love for chocolate covered eggplant beggars. With hot sauce. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. Well, if it wasn't for four meddling kids in a turquoise van, we would not be discussing Scooby-Doo. No, we would not. This one was highly requested and I'm so excited to get into it. This film is so quotable and so iconic for so many reasons. The screenplay was written by James Gunn. It was directed by a guy called Raja Gosnell, who also directed Scooby-Doo 2 and The Smurfs. He's also a really accomplished editor, and he edited films like Mrs. Doubtfire, Home Alone, and Pretty Woman. Wow! Now, the budget for this movie was a cool $84 million. Okay. (laughs) And the box office gross was $275 million. So we just want to preface this episode by saying we are doing the Spooky Island film. The original, Mm -hmm. the best. So if you're unfamiliar with Scooby-Doo Spooky Island, first of all, how dare you? Sorry. (laughs) Wow, that was spooky. (laughs) Actually, side note, this is a... PG film, okay? And I'm not being funny, but when we were watching this, wasn't I scared? You were scared. I was scared in the first like minute, like, oh. Yeah. I remembered how much I hated that kind of like spooky toy factory scene <laughs> with the lunar ghost. <laughs> He does have a really creepy face. The black eyes and then the the black smile. Uh Uh-huh. So basically, remember Mystery Inc., they split up. And then two years later, after having gone their separate ways, they all get invited to go to Spooky Island Mm -hmm. to go and basically solve a mystery that's happening on there. And then obviously when they arrive at the airport, Mystery Inc. reunited. So we've got Shaggy, who's played by Matthew Lillard. Oh my God, does he not look like James Morrison? (laughs) Uncanny, the king of Magic FM himself. Maybe Matthew Lillard can play him if there's ever some like biopic on his life. What an absolutely great idea. (laughs) So Matthew Lillard, he starred in Scream back in 1996. Mm -hmm. He was also in that film Without a Paddle with Seth Green and Dax Shepard. And fun little bit of synchronicity, as we like to say. Seth Green appears in the Scooby-Doo sequel, Monsters Unleashed, playing Velma's love interest. Oh! So, little reunion. Nice. Very nice. We've got Freddie Prince Jr. in this. Oh, hunk. I mean, he is the Scooby snack in this film. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. Even with that bleached blonde hair. And fun fact, he actually had to shave his hair off after filming Scooby-Doo because, like, the bleach completely ruined his hair. It's just... It fried it. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Mm. At this time, he was going out with Sarah Michelle Gellar, who plays Daphne, and a bit of a anomaly in Hollywood. They are still together today. Amazing. They are married. I think they've got two kids. Oh, my God. Honestly, they should start their own Mystery Inc. Yeah, Fred and Daphne got in the love machine. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if the vans are rocking, don't come a knocking. <laughs> Velma's like, jinkies, let me watch. (laughs) They had to keep stealing her glasses so she wouldn't watch. (laughs) Sarah Michelle Gellar is probably most known for playing Buffy in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm -hmm. Although she's also had prominent roles in Cruel Intentions and I know what you did last summer. Did you know that Jennifer Love Hewitt and Jennifer Aniston were considered for the role of Daphne? Yes. That would have made for a very different film, I think. I don't know what the age difference is between her and Sarah Michelle Gellar, but I feel like Jennifer Aniston would have been a bit older than the rest of the Mystery Inc. Maybe. But I don't know. She can do anything. She's Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, exactly. you know? She could have played Scooby. Yeah. <laughs> Ro- oh. Ross! <laughs> I got off the plane. No Scooby snacks there. We were on a break. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. That, that 
is the Friends episode I want to see. No, but I think Sarah Michelle Gellar does a really good job and her natural chemistry with Freddie Prince Jr., just speaks for itself like it feels oh, just so genuine yeah 100 percent. they look like such a good couple as well it's like yeah Ugh, almost resent them for being that good looking I know. let's talk about linda cardellini who plays velma you might recognize her as chutney in legally blonde yes evil chutney yeah i didn't mean to shoot him i thought it was you walking through the door <gasps> yeah frizzy bitch <laughs> <laughs> um, but Linda, obviously we know her from Freaks and Geeks, Dead to Me on Netflix, which is honestly so amazing. And she was also in New Girl as well. Oh, realize. lovely. Yeah. James Gunn, the screenwriter, revealed that the original script had Velma portrayed as explicitly gay. Um, but the studio decided to kind of water it down and block any references to her sexuality. And there was actually a kiss between Daphne and Velma that was filmed, but they ended up cutting. Um, But it was during the scene where they were kind of body swapping. I think they said something like, oh, only a kiss can make our souls go back into the right bodies or something. So it wasn't like a romantic kiss. Rowan Atkinson is also in this film. He plays Mondavarius. Yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. I mean, I always find it really weird watching... Rowan Atkinson have a speaking part you know what I mean because you know in my head he is just Mr Bean yes I was literally about to say like you forget he can actually speak yeah literally (laughs) but he does such a good job he does an amazing job and you know that kind of kooky kind of character he plays really well he plays it so well although the reveal that it's actually Scrappy-Doo inside a Mondavarius kind of like robot is at the end you do see a few hints throughout like there's a scene where Mondavarius you see him kind of scratching behind his ear Ah. and in his office he has a bookshelf and the bookends are like dog heads yes and isn't there also like a nodding cat on the on the side table next to me he's like don't touch that yeah so yeah there we go okay we've got Isla Fisher who plays Mary Jane love that for her and (laughs) (laughs) this must have been one of her first films yeah well apparently she actually auditioned for Daphne but she didn't get the role but the producers were really impressed with her so they gave her the part of Mary Jane oh that's good and I think she plays it really well I I love that kind of cute relationship she has with Shaggy yeah I mean it would have been nice to kind of see that in the sequel Eh, maybe she was busy (laughs) and ironically Sarah Michelle Gellar who is blonde portrays the redhead Daphne and Isla Fisher, who is naturally a redhead, portrays the blonde head Mary Jane. So a lot of wig swapping yeah. um, for that film. The last person we should just give a really, really quick shout out to is someone who's in the film for maybe one minute. Pamela Anderson. Oh, yes. Like, right. It's so weird. But she's very good. And why do they turn up just because Fred's like the good looking mystery solver who's she, famous? So she drives the Mystery Inc. van into the toy factory after they've secured the Lunar Ghost. Yeah. Pam Anderson kind of struts over to Fred. She's like, oh, Fred, thank you so much for saving my toy factory. Because I think they were selling like Pamela Anderson dolls or oh, something. Oh, right. Because remember, they're all like in a big yes. pile of dolls. I think those were hers. Right. Shall we um, put our hands in and start our first category? Woohoo! Hey Now Hey Now has something very exciting to announce. We've released a gift card and gift wrap collaboration with the incredible British illustrator, Zoe Spry. Shut up! Excuse me? No, our Princess Diaries card with Mia. It says, it's your birthday? Shut up! I love this so much. (laughs) (laughs) So if you stand some nostalgic gift cards and gift wrap and want to support the Zoe Spry and Hey Now Hey Now collaboration, head to zoespry.com. You will not regret it. I want this Meredith card for my birthday in October, please. Being young and beautiful is not a crime, you know. Ugh, a bit vain. That's also on the card. We designed these. How could you forget? (laughs) So let's chat all things best supporting character. Jinkies! (laughs) And I think we should start with Mary Jane. 
who is Shaggy's love interest in the film. Oh, she's so cute. So innocent. And I really love their little, like, romantic storyline, to be honest. It's sweet. So she turns up on the plane. You know what's actually funny? Maybe it's a bit of a, a plot hole, but the scene starts when they're, like, flying high in the air. You know, they're all chatting. And Shaggy suddenly looks, and Mary Jane's walking down the aisle looking for somewhere to sit. Yeah. It's like, the plane's been in the air for, like, at least an hour. Why is she only just looking for a seat? You can't use the bathroom before the seatbelt signs are off. <laughs> so. <laughs> what was she doing? I don't know. Maybe there's no rules on Spooky Island We flights. should. Maybe we should talk about that and can we discuss, but that was, like, a part party bus <laughs> no one's wearing seatbelts <laughs> that hostess trolley is going straight down the aisle yeah. what the heck you're allowed cats on it like on your lap who's bringing a cat to spooky island <laughs> <laughs> like where are you putting that unless you're going to sacrifice it with the voodoo guy maybe um but yeah no it's really cute isn't it she basically ends up sitting next to scoob and shaggy mm. and she's like allergic to scooby isn't she yeah and then and there's that really funny moment between them where they're like introducing each other and um, mary jane's like i'm mary jane like that's my favorite name <laughs> Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> um, and then she like loves Scooby Snacks. She eats Scooby Snacks and she's like, mm, I'm so embarrassed. Like, uh, yeah, I know they're for dogs, but oh, they're, they're vegetarian. Eat an apple. I'm not being funny, <laughs> but if I was interested in a guy and he was like, I eat dog biscuits, red flag. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> Forget Scooby Snacks, have a biscuit. It's the same texture. It's called a bourbon. Like, <laughs> just... <laughs> But no, they they quickly kind of become enamoured of each other. Like he even wins a prize for her at the little arcade game. Yes, when she's like, no one's ever won me a stuffed dismembered head before. (laughs) She's genuinely like so, so thrilled. Yeah. And like loving it. Honestly. My favourite scene with Mary Jane is when Shaggy and Scooby are on the quad bikes getting away from the kind of like student zombies and what we don't know is that mary jane has actually already got a monster inside her oh yeah and um he's kind of wearing her skin as a disguise and um while they're on the quad bikes she gets hit in the head by a tree branch and it kind of like pushes all her skin around you can kind of see that there's a monster inside and shaggy obviously misses it but scooby sees yeah and uh scooby's like whoa (laughs) <laughs> and um you know he's trying to warn shaggy shaggy's not really having any of it and then scooby suddenly falls down a manhole and shaggy's like scooby's in danger i've got to save him and mary jane replies no shaggy <clears throat> i mean it's too dangerous <laughs> and i'm not even joking i say that every week at least once a week like my housemate can can attest to this literally i always go no shaggy <laughs> like second nature you don't even think of it just it's just like one of those phrases it's just in my vocabulary yeah yeah why no shaggy why say no when you can say no shaggy (laughs) (laughs) right who else is a contender for best supporting character okay so another side character who is really funny i think is brad with the spiky hair yeah the one who you get introduced to when they first arrive at spooky island and mondavarius is like yeah you know we don't know what's going on all the students who who are leaving are like possessed and this guy brad he's got like spiky hair i don't know even how to explain it peak early 2000s yeah like it's like dennis the menace spiky yeah like he'd be one of those guys with like no fear board shorts oh uh, yeah Yeah, completely you you know what i mean and he's like carol we've known each other since we were like three and she just like picks him up and just throws him like (laughs) super strength yeah into the gang she's like are you tripping on me like (laughs) what literally and that being thrown at you is like someone throwing a puff of fish at you <laughs> yeah watch out bell oh, seriously sonic the hedgehog coming through <laughs> <laughs> so true oh uh, but he's fine yeah oh actually no he's not fine because later we see him like possessed oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh brad <laughs> We also have the voodoo ritual guy yes. who kind of provides us with a bit of comic relief, mm-hmm. doesn't he? Yeah, he's on uh, IMDb's Voodoo Maestro. Oh, sorry. I need to give him some some respect. Voodoo Maestro. We get introduced to him in the beginning because he's kind of like doing his own little like voodoo rituals and Daphne discovers him. Mm-hmm. 
And there's this great bit of dialogue between them where Daphne's like, I'm looking for clues behind the strange behavior of the college students. And Voodoo Maestro is like, well, here's a clue for you. Purple is a fall color. It's the middle of May. (laughs) Hey, she pulls off purple really well. She does. It's her signature. Yeah. He's great. And he kind of warns Daphne not to go to the spooky castle. But Daphne thinks that he's doing some kind of like reverse psychology on him. So she does go to the castle. Yes. And I still don't know. He genuinely was trying to warn her, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I like him. Yeah. Funny. Partial to a rotisserie chicken. (laughs) You know, what a great guy. (laughs) He's got excellent taste. Yeah. Yeah. I also wanted to give a shout out to a couple of smaller characters. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have the bartender who says to Velma, nice sweater, and (laughs) offers her a free drink. (laughs) She just gets hit on by all of these guys. Right. But it's because she's just not interested in any way for the reasons we all now know. (laughs) And also, who could forget the classic scene where they wake up on the beach the next morning after the huge attack on the hotel and everything's back to normal. And they're like, whoa, what happened to all the broken glass? And, you know, all the students around them are like completely back to normal. And there's a blonde girl on the beach whose volleyball has rolled over to them. She's got one bit of dialogue, but like, honestly, I hear it whenever I close my eyes at night. She goes, (laughs) yo, red! Daphne would have hated that. So yeah, shout out to the ball girl. But we have to award best supporting character to an absolute icon, Mr. Do. Scooby Doo? No, Melvin Do. Oh, <laughs> Melvin. <laughs> That is such a great moment between the bartender and Melvin, isn't it? And Scooby's kind of like sitting near them. Yeah. And he's like, I got a call for Mr. Do. And this Melvin guy stands up and goes, uh, Melvin Do? Nah, Scooby. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) And he picks up the phone. (laughs) Such an amazing kind of like couplet of dialogue. Yeah. I love that. And then, of course, it comes back right at the end where there's the big confrontation between Mondavarius and Scooby. And Mondavarius says, all I need to complete my plan is Scooby-Doo. And then Scooby goes, me? Don't you mean (laughs) Melvin-Doo? And the camera pans over and there's Melvin Do, who's like possessed at this point, just staring into space. <laughs> Melvin! Melvin Do! Obviously, we only had Melvin Do appear for <laughs> literally a few seconds, but his legacy lives on on the online community, so much so that there is an actual petition going around <laughs> called We Want a Melvin Do Cameo in Suicide Squad 2. <laughs> Because James Gunn, the writer of both live action Scooby-Doo movies, directed and wrote the new Suicide Squad movie. And, you know, diehard fans were disappointed that Melvin didn't come up in the second Scooby-Doo movie. So they petitioned to have somehow write him into the Suicide Squad. Wait, how many signs are there? 277. Well, there's going to be 279 after this podcast, so... Well, the film's already out. Oh. <laughs> Maybe Suicide Squad 3. Yeah. There's still time. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going on to most iconic outfit. And this film is not shy of a shell necklace. <laughs> <laughs> That's for true. We are treated to many at Spooky Island. Mm-hmm. Keeping the Pucker family in business. <laughs> it's called Pucker Shell, isn't it? I don't, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm happy to say that I avoided any shell or beaded necklace trends. Oh no, I definitely went through like a, um, a surfy phase. Yeah, a little Roxy phase. <laughs> First of all, can we just give a shout out to Mystery Inc.'s outfits that they wear? Mm -hmm. Because they're just so iconic. Oh my goodness, yes. We have Daphne wearing that gorgeous purple, like, what would you call it? Mini dress. It's a mini dress, yeah. Um, And then she's got like her green headband on and then also her like lilac kind of go-go boots yes um and actually sarah michelle geller has said after the film was made that she like hated wearing those boots so she would get out of them as 
quickly as possible and like get into trainers. Fair enough. No wonder she was getting captured all the time and being a damsel in distress. It's because you couldn't run away. Yeah, Daphne, change your footwear. Yeah, yeah, invest in some hoka shoes. <laughs> Definitely. And we also have Fred, who weirdly looks good in anything, even that, you know, white sweater and orange ascot. But he looks like a bit of like a sailor. Yeah, he does. Ahoy there, sailor. And then there's that scene when he's signing autographs at the toy factory and he spots a guy who's dressed just like him in the crowd. He's like, hey, you're a good looking guy. Yeah. Like Classic. But towards the end of the film, he's wearing this like blue short sleeve shirt and ugh, fits just right. <laughs> if you ask me. We'll stuck. Yeah. <laughs> We also need to give a shout out to Velma's outfit. And no, I'm not talking about her brumpy roll neck and like pleated skirt. I'm talking about after she gets possessed by the monster and she's had (laughs) such a glow up. Yeah, I just think it's really funny that this hideous monster recognizes that she's got like an awful jumper. And even the monster is like, oh, honey, we're getting rid of this. (laughs) If I'm in this body, we're getting rid of this jumper. But it's not just the jumper. It's so, yeah, it's like a top that like really shows her cleavage. Her hair, she's now got like a side fringe. Flicked out bob. Flicked out bob. Her glasses are gone. She's wearing so much makeup. How does the monster know how to put makeup on? (laughs) Honestly, he's stunning. Yeah. Leave some tips, please. (laughs) I think, yeah, she just looks so good. I mean, who could resist? But we have to award most iconic outfit to Scooby-Doo's disguise on the plane when he's dressed as a grandma. Oh my goodness. So he's dressed up because big dogs aren't allowed on the plane. That's right. And he like struts in, doesn't he? He's kind of like tripping on his like platform heels. Yeah. He's got like a long kind of almost like nighty dress. Yes. It's a bit like white with like flower prints on. In my notes, I refer to it as an old maiden dress. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> with like doesn't it have like frilly sleeves yeah he's got like cat eye tortoiseshell glasses and he's got a big straw hat on yeah it's so funny no one's dumb enough to believe that who's the ugly old broad <laughs> <laughs> and you know what i came across a childhood ruining tiktok that showed what scooby-doo looked like before the cgi had been added <gasps> what it is so weirdly disturbing and the scene they show is scooby kind of stumbling through the airport terminal in that dress oh it's terrifying can we see i'll show you yeah yes please was pod i'd like a oh my god it looks like the mask right jim carrey is that you honestly i'm going as pre-cgi scooby-doo for halloween (laughs) it's couture (laughs) So next up we have best musical moment and this soundtrack is so good for so many reasons. Someone has made a playlist on Spotify so you can go back and listen to all the iconic songs. The track that I immediately think of is Bump in the Night by All Stars. (gasps) So that song is played while the gang are escaping the castle at the top of Spooky Island Mountain. And yeah, they're kind of running out and ripping off their disguises. Like (laughs) Velma has this like grey chin beer that she rips off and (laughs) Shaggy's got this like leg of armor that he's kind of like stumbling around with and that's kind of the moment where the gang for the first time are like having fun with each other again so that's a really nice moment cute they were really tangled up in there were those plastic sausages (laughs) yeah gross (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) and Shaggy's a vegetarian that must have been really scary for him (laughs) bro Another scene that is really nice is the flashback scene that Velma has when reminiscing on the old days. Mm. And we have God Only Knows playing by the Beach Boys, Aww. which is just a classic. Yes. Isn't it? Totally fits in with the kind of surfy 60s vibe that Scooby-Doo has had. Oh, that's such a nice reminiscing scene. What music's playing when it does that two years later at Shaggy and Scooby are in the mystery machine by the beach? Another day in paradise. Past it, a cheap on the left hand side. Such a good song. Yeah. So that is, that is... an old song um, by a band called Musical Youth. In case you didn't know, a duchy is a Jamaican cooking pot. I and love it. while there's not much reason to pass one around, it was an acceptable substitute for the original lyric, which was past the kuchi. 
and kuchi being Jamaican slang for a pot that holds marijuana. Oh, because it's quite a few like marijuana jokes with Shaggy and Scoop, you know? Exactly. Well, I mean, that's the kind of joke in that scene. You see a load of smoke coming out the mystery ink van and then you realise inside Shaggy and Scooby are just frying some... Eggplant. (laughs) (laughs) That is a great song. I also love that they got the artist Shaggy to sing his own version of the Scooby-Doo theme tune for the closing credits. Amazing. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, where are you? We've got some work to do now. So every episode in this category, we find ourselves singing. And I'm just so sorry. Thank you for sticking with us. You must be like, oh my God. Like, I forget hundreds of thousands of people listen to this. And then I'm like... Emily's desperate for that recording contract, guys. (laughs) Scooby-Dooby-Doo. Are you done? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We also have Words to Me by Sugar Ray, who actually appear in the film. They are kind of performing and trying to serenade Daphne, even though all of them are actually secretly monsters. Right. It's that song. It's like, please don't leave me hanging on and on. And then they, you know go crazy start to chase them and then they're like using their electric guitars to smash into that like shed to get to Shaggy and Scooby actually pretty scary (laughs) I'm with you on the scare factor honestly those green and glowing eyes yeah and Fred's like get the dog (laughs) 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 wait is his name Freddie Prince Jr yeah and he's playing Fred yeah I just got that (laughs) am I okay no (laughs) Before we announce our winner for Best Musical Moment, I also just wanted to give a shout out to the song that plays when we see that first establishing shot of Spooky Island. It's called Land of a Million Drums. You know, it's like, in the land of a million drums, there is always something going on. Oh. Um, Columbia Records just called. They want to sign you. Yes! <laughs> hey, Emily got her phone out and like, genuinely, I was like, oh, has something happened? No. She committed to the bit. I like it. Also, can I just say, I know we're going to go on to Can We Discuss, but there is no way I would be going to Spooky Island. What? On my spring break. Oh my God, I'm desperate to go. No. Oh, get possessed. I'm not voluntarily going to get myself possessed. (gasps) Honestly, if it gets me out of work, then fine. Um, Okay, take out the monsters. It looks like quite an enjoyable time. Does it? A little like tiki bar. Fun. Post-uni. Like, little week with your friends. Yeah, if it had less voodoo, less, like, Halloween theme, then I'd be fine. More, like, sunbathing in pools. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, what are we going to award Best Musical Moment? Oh, there can only be one song. And that has to be the sacrifice song. That is right. When all of the kind of possessed students are in the big cave chanting, like, (laughs) What do they call it? What's the what's the lyric at the end? This is what us creatures do. And then Fred carries on singing. Yeah, that's right. So they finish the song, but Fred and Velma, who are trying to like fit in, even though they're not possessed, they miss the timing and Fred is caught kind of still going along with it. And then he's, he's like, shit. Yo, 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 home dogs. Uh, y'all forgot the next part of the dance where we do the electric slide, where, you know, it's, it's electric. Bow, boom, woo. And, you know, back it up. Drive the bus. Drive the bus. And stop. (laughs) And Velma's kind of like following him. Like she should have saved herself and just froze. Yeah, exactly. Let let them take Fred. Yeah, Uh, exactly. She's she's obviously not interested in him. Yeah, exactly. She's not interested in him anyway. So I was waiting for Melvin Do's solo song, but whatever. (laughs) At least we didn't award it to their burping competition. Ew. Shall we go on to best quotes? (laughs) Jinkies. Ew. Jinkies. Okay, so now we're going on to best quotes. Sounds great. (laughs) Okay, so a quote that I'd like to start with is straight after the toy factory saga with the lunar ghost. They're standing outside and Shaggy kind of gives a little speech to the guys. Like a pep talk to kind of get everyone back together. Yeah, he's like, hey, you guys, look. I know I'm just like the dude that carries the bags, but it seems to me we all play an important part in this group. I mean, we're just like a big, delicious banana split. Banana. Banana. <laughs> Fred, 
you're the big banana. He sure is. <laughs> Daphne, you're the pastrami and the bubblegum flavored ice cream. Ew. <laughs> and Velma, you're the sweet and sour mustard sauce that goes on top. Mm. <laughs> that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? You know what, Shaggy? You really put it into perspective for me. Thanks. I quit. <laughs> <gasps> oh, no! no! Oh, gutted. Yeah, and then they all quit for two years. Yeah, long time. Yeah. Speaking of Velma, she has a few great bits of dialogue, especially in relation to Fred. When they're in the castle, Daphne says, this place is like uber creepy. And Velma says, yeah. The only thing missing is a mindless zombie. And then as soon as she says that, Fred enters. <laughs> and uh, later, when it's just the two of them, she says to him, I know you, Fred. All you care about are swimsuit models. And Fred's like, look, I'm a man of substance. Dorky chicks like you turn me on too. <laughs> she also has that little chat with Daphne and she's like, oh, please, you get kidnapped so much. You should come with your own ransom note. And then Daphne snatches Velma's glasses. My glasses! Where's my glasses? Who's helpless now? <laughs> <laughs> if you're a detective, you might want to consider getting some contacts. Yeah. But um, I don't know why there's this rivalry, because clearly Velma is in love with Daphne. Yeah. Remember the scene where she's reminiscing on old times? She's like, and Daphne, she was so beautiful. She was always the coolest girl at Coolsville High. <laughs> I want to be a student at Coolsville High. Yeah, I'd be an exchange student. Yeah, I think we'd fit in. Well, (laughs) you would. (laughs) You know when they'd like broken up and there's the scene where Shaggy and Scoob are in the mystery machine by the beach. Yeah. And then the guy who works for um, Spooky Island and Mondavarius knocks on the door of the mystery machine and is like, hey, like I'm looking for a Mr. Rogers and a Mr. Do. Yeah. And he's like, my employer would like you to solve a mystery on Spooky Island. And then Shaggy's like, hold on, man. We don't go anywhere with scary, spooky, haunted, or forbidden in the title. And then Scoob goes, or hydroclonic. Sorry. <laughs> right. Or hydroclonic. But that's for a whole different reason, man. <laughs> And Shaggy and Scooby have that other great moment where they are trapped in the castle. They're pinned to the wall with all that food. We gotta eat our way out. It's plastic. (laughs) Whoops. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) Hanna-Barbera. And then Shaggy goes, what do you care? You drink out of the toilet. And Scooby replies, "Uh, so do you. (laughs) Shaggy, love yourself. That is safe. It's called Evian. Look it up sometime. There's also this, it's a really small bit, but um, it's when Shaggy is looking into the vat of like protoplasm or whatever it's called, looking for the kind of spirits of Fred, Velma and Daphne. And uh, he picks one out and it's this random guy and he's like, thank you so much. You saved me. And Shaggy's like, "Uh, sorry, I'm looking for my friends and puts the guy back in the vat. (laughs) Like just Hang him out. Yes, yeah, it's so rude. Speaking off the castle, there's that really funny moment with the voodoo maestro and Daphne. And he's like, whatever you do, don't go in- into that spooky island castle. And then he points up at the castle. Classic. And Daphne's like, uh-huh. You want me to go into that castle. Didn't you hear what I just said? But you're scary. And you knew I'd do the opposite of what you said. So you told me not to go up to that castle, so I would go up to that castle where you've set a trap to capture me. Unless, unless you knew I'd figure it out, so you told me not to go up to that castle, so I would think that you wanted me to go, so I wouldn't go, just like you didn't want me to. I'll find out what you're hiding in that castle, you'll see. Then she walks away, and then the maestro goes, what in the world? (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, women, am I right? (laughs) But true. (laughs) Literally, when, like, you text a guy and they give you a one-word response and you sit there for the rest of the night analysing what it actually means. He wrote, okay, but does that mean he's okay? Or does that mean he's like, okay? (laughs) Or, okay. Oh, it's so (laughs) hard! (laughs) And isn't it so much more passive-aggressive if they type O-K-A-Y? Yes. Like, stop drawing it out! (laughs) Yeah, well, at least it's not a K, because then you're in trouble. (laughs) K full stop. Oh! Oh! (laughs) That's like a dagger. Oh my god. Right. I guess this leads us on quite nicely to our best quote. Speaking of guys you can't really understand. (laughs) 
<laughs> Fred has been possessed by one of the monsters and Shaggy and Scooby come across him dressed in, honestly, the longest board shorts I think I've ever seen. They're almost trousers. <laughs> And he's got like that shell necklace and everything else. Yeah, you could wear them in the boardroom. No, that yeah. <laughs> Fred goes, yo, yo, the biatch was like, what? And I was like, later on. <laughs> and Shaggy rolls up and he's like, Fred. And Fred's like, yo, what up, dog? And looks at Scooby. And uh, dog? And Scooby replies, keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. So good. Perfect. Oh my god, how do you do that impersonation? Here's a practice. Oh no, <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> so now we're on Can We Discuss? And I know you mentioned how scared you were of Spooky Island, but I would love to visit it. And when I was watching this for the first time back in the day, I was convinced that it was a real location. Right. Like you could actually visit it. And it wasn't until I was doing research for this episode that I found out that it was kind of half true. Really? So all of the scenes on Spooky Island were actually filmed at the Tangaluma Resort on Morton Island, which is located off the coast of Brisbane in Australia. Oh, right. So the entire cast flew there in part because they get like 350 days of sun a year. Like it's guaranteed good weather. Although, side note, apparently somehow Linda Cardellini got a cold while filming and they had to like pause for a day. Oh, Bloody Linda. Yeah, sleeping with the aircon on. Oh. Rookie mistake. That'll get you. That'll get you. <laughs> but no, I just love the whole kind of tiki vibe. It just looked like fun. Tiki vibes is cute. Demon vibes is not cute. <laughs> There's a difference. Holograms in the fire. Yeah, like on, on the on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> but I just love that it was kind of like a resort for students. Mm-hmm. Like you're not seeing, you know, families or like kids running around. Ugh. Yeah. As if. <laughs> um, so what I think would be amazing is if they made a kind of Scooby-Doo theme park that was themed like Spooky Island. Okay, fine. Wouldn't that yeah. be amazing? And they could recreate the ghost train that is in the castle scene. Yes. Even though that ride looked so dangerous for so many reasons. I mean, knives can also be thrown at you. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of the fun. <laughs> Gets your adrenaline going. <laughs> Dagger to the face. <laughs> Speaking of the castle scene, when the gang kind of fall into the backstage area and Scooby and Shaggy find that kind of TV studio with the kitchen and they're talking and they end up having that like burp and fart challenge. I'm sorry, the sounds that came from Shaggy, like he definitely shat himself. Oh my goodness. That is so unhealthy. And also that is such like a, sorry to sound stereotypical, boy joke. (laughs) Yeah, oh God, it's like, it's not funny. It's only gross. Scooby and Shaggy do not have a great diet, do they? No, I mean the lentils Shaggy is probably eating. Speaking of their crazy diets, obviously at the end of the film, they're really happy because obviously now they can do their all they can eat kind of thing finally finally and they're sitting at the table and they've both got like jars of hot peppers scooby gets so hot that shaggy has to pull out his tongue and like put tomato ketchup yeah. on it to cool it down i'm like is that a trick does that work because at first he drinks water and he's like it's not doing anything and that is yeah he's right you should not have water you should have like milk or something yeah because what does it do like spread the flames or something or something i don't know my housemate at uni her boyfriend was over and he brought us hot sauce which is called de bomb it's like one of the hottest hot sauces in the world <sighs> i'm no like hot sauce connoisseur you know like i go for medium sauce at nando's you know yeah <laughs> and um, I basically took a little dab on my little finger. Okay. So this is like a tiny, tiny droplet. And tried the hot sauce. I was on fire. It was just crazy. No water was stopping it. I had to eat loads of ice cream. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it was the hottest thing. Scoob should definitely go on that YouTube channel, Hot Ones. Yes. That would be such a good interview, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I'd see that. It would be incredible. Yeah, I would subscribe in a second. (laughs) The last thing we should probably talk about is the weird choice of vocabulary that I guess the monsters were using to, to try and fit in with the other students. 
obviously that training video was like so old because the <laughs> phrases they were using were just bizarre. Yeah, it was kind of like, yo, yo, G, what's up? If this film was made today, would we know the lingo? Probably not. Things are changing all the time. Like, guilty. Sometimes I have to go on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I recently found out this word called chugi. Yes, I've heard of this. Are we like grandmas? Oh, I've heard of this new word. Yeah, but like, we're 28. So I don't think that's old. <laughs> chugi, that's like anything that's outdated. So like Ugg boots are chugi or... Minion memes. So there's this article in the New York Times I'm looking at now. <laughs> and it says that chugi can be used by the type of people who get married at 20 years old or have millennial girl boss energy. <laughs> like, it's not quite basic. It's not uncool. It's not embarrassing or, or even always negative. Chugi can broadly be used to describe someone who is, like, a bit out of date or just trying too hard. Right. So I have a list of things that are potentially chugi that I'm going to run through right now. Okay. On your 22nd birthday, writing the Instagram caption, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. <laughs> Very chuggy. Very chuggy. Thank you, next. Chuggy. <laughs> Life's a beach. Oh, chuggy. <laughs> After dying or cutting your hair, having the caption, I did a thing. Oh, chuggy. <laughs> and also, um, after Valentine's Day or, or your birthday, the boy did good. Oh, chuggy. Spread the word, guys. Spread oh the word. Oh my god, literally burn those phrases and your Paul's boutique bag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's time for the trivia round. Zoinks! <laughs> so there's the scene where Shaggy is taking Fred's protoplasmic head out of the cauldron. Mm -hmm. What was the reason why Fred thought he was there? Um, did he think that he got spiked? Because he was like, talk me down, man. Talk me down. Yes. So he thought that someone had spiked his root beer. Yippee for you. There we go. <laughs> Great. Okay. Scooby snack for you. Thank you. Oh, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> You're too good at that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Can you tell me the name of Fred's autobiography? <gasps> Fred, the many faces of me. Yes. <laughs> Yippee for you. It's Fred on Fred, the many faces of me. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I'd read that. Yeah, honestly, if, as long as there were pictures of him. Yeah, fair. <laughs> All right, my second question for you. What is Scrappy Doo's middle name? Is it Cornelius? Yes! yes! <laughs> Yippee for you. So cute! <laughs> Scrappy Cornelius Doo. Aww. He's a feisty one. <laughs> feisty one, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> put him up, put him up. He's cute until he pees on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, can you tell me how many carry-on bags Daphne tries to take on the plane? Yes, she tries to take on seven bags and they won't let her. And she's like, oh, this is so economy. <laughs> <laughs> Yippee for you. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Love. All right. So in one of the beginning scenes when they're on Spooky Island, a creature calls the phone and Scooby picks up mm -hmm. and they entice him into the woods by telling him they have a bag of what? Hamburgers. Yes. Yippee for you. Oh, delicious. Oh my God. Honestly, delicious. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. My next question for you. Can you tell me the name of the plane that they fly on to get to Spooky Island? Is it just called like Spooky Airlines or something? So close. Spooky Flight? You're close to the first time. Oh, Spooky Atlantic? <laughs> no, you had it, but just shorten that second word. Spooky Air. Yes! <laughs> Yippee for you. Ooh, we're 40,000 feet in the air. Oh, the plane has landed. <laughs> oh my God. Clapping after uh, a plane lands. Chuggy. Chuggy. <laughs> so chuggy. <laughs> oh my God. What's that joke about people who clap when the plane lands? Deserve to die. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Welcome to Spooky Island. We sacrifice all people who clap. <laughs> oh my God. Or anyone who gets up as soon as the seatbelt sign gets off. Yeah. Just 
Guys, a little bit of patience, because otherwise it's just standing in the aisle for ages. And people who stand on the Travelator. It's like, like you're quicker walking off the Travelator <laughs> than standing on a Travelator. <laughs> Ugh, chugs. Chuggy. For God's sake. Okay, my question to you. What is Shaggy's reason for him and Scooby not doing castles? Oh no! Um, There's two things. Is it creepy statues that follow you? Or is it paintings who watch you? No, Shaggy. Shaggy says, because castles have paintings with eyes that follow, suits of armor that keep following you every time you turn around. So uh, yeah. I had the word. Yeah, they were I think just in so. the wrong order. And a nice little fact to that is everything that Shaggy describes actually occurred in the cartoon series of Scooby Doo. So like the first ever cartoon to be aired was called Night for a Night, which was in nineteen sixty nine. And those things happened those in things the happened. Yeah. I love that. So, They've done their research. Yeah, they? clever. Great. Okay, here's my fourth question for you. How long has Mr. Monteverius been locked in that hole for? The real Mr. Montevarius. Was it two years? Yes! <laughs> Yippee for you. Like he was looking like a shriveled Mr. Bean, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he was, honestly. That There needs some more soil in that. <laughs> Not poo. <laughs> You know what's so funny? On the movie poster of the film, the tagline is, do happens. It's funny. That is very funny. Lovely. Okay, my last question to you. There's a really kind of quite emotional moment between Shaggy and Scooby when Scooby's off to be sacrificed. Shaggy's like, a sacrifice, dude. That's not a very good thing, Scoob, kind of thing. He basically says to Scooby, like, who's your best buddy? And then Scooby's like, Rug. <laughs> right? And who's my best buddy in the whole world? Ruby Doo. <laughs> and he says, That's right, Scoob. You are. And we're like, Can you fill out the blank? What does he say they're like? They're like ketchup and mustard? <laughs> no, Shaggy. Ah, uh, they're two trippy peas in a far out pod, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like us. Yeah. Far, far out. out. <laughs> Chuggy. <Chugi. laughs> oh, dear. My last question to you, when Fred's spirit flies into Daphne's body by accident, what realisation does he have? He realises that he can look at himself naked. Yippee for you. Yes! <laughs> hey, I can look at myself naked. Yeah. And Velma's like, oh, brother. Yeah, yeah she's just jealous. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed that Chugi episode <laughs> of Hey Now, Hey Now. Chugi doogie doo! <laughs> I hope you were listening to that in your... Fiat 500. (laughs) Chuggy. Chuggy. So chuggy. They're really safe. (laughs) Especially the ones with the eyelashes on the... Oh, no. Let us tell you what's more exclusive than the Damon Ritus. We have done a gift card and gift wrap collaboration with an amazing British illustrator. She's called Zoe Spry. And we've made seven A6 gift cards. Mm -hmm. They're gorgeous. Based on the films you've spoken about in our podcast. And we've got three gift wraps as well, which you can buy alongside. So your gifting is going to look really cute and millennial. Yeah. Not chuggy, we promise. Like you'll want to probably buy them and just make a little, you know, gallery wall. Is that Chuggy? Oh no. Our gallery wall is Chuggy now. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Chuggy's ruined everything in my life. <laughs> Look, you don't own a Live, Laugh, Love poster, so you're fine. That's true. And it's so cool. I love it. They look so good. My favorite is the Regina George one that says, Happy birthday, you fugly slut. Just make sure you don't give that one to your grandma. Um... <laughs> don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> what if she is a fugly slut? Hey, well, she. <laughs> I think the Meredith one is my favourite. But you can find out what that one's about. Yeah. If you go to zoespry.com. That's Z-O-E-S-P-R-Y.com. And it's worldwide shipping. So it's not just exclusive to the UK. And don't forget to get them all. Unless they're chuggy. You tell us if they're chuggy, right? Right? Oh. Oh.